Warning, the following message may be offensive to some audiences. These audiences may include, but are not limited to, professing Christians who never read their Bible, sissies, sodomites, men with man buns, those who approve of men with man buns, man bun enablers, white knights for men with man buns, homemakers who have finished Netflix but don't know how to meal plan, and people who refer to their pets as fur babies. Viewer discretion is advised. People are tired of hearing nothing but doom and despair on the radio. The message of Christianity is that salvation is found in Christ alone, and any who reject Christ, therefore, forfeit any hope of salvation, any hope of heaven. The issue is that humanity is in sin, and the wrath of Almighty God is hanging over our heads. They will hear His words, they will not act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment, when the fires of wrath come, they will be consumed, and they will perish. God wrapped himself in flesh, condescended, and became a man, died on the cross for sin, was resurrected on the third day, has ascended to the right hand of the Father, where he sits now to make intercession for us. Jesus is saying there is a group of people who will hear his words, they will act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment come in that final day, their house will stand. Welcome to Bible Bashed, where we aim to equip the saints for the works of ministry by answering the questions you're not allowed to ask. Listen and enjoy this midweek installment of Answering a Fool, as Pastor Tim answers a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. In these shorter episodes, Pastor Tim answers objections from internet trolls in an effort to help them go home and rethink their lives. Troll hunting is hard work, but hey, someone's got to do it. Now, without further ado... Here's Pastor Tim. In this episode of Answering a Fool, we're going to be answering the question, should Christians mind their own business, tend their own marriages, and quit commenting on sodomy? Now, whenever Christians seek to speak to issues related to sodomy, inevitably what you're going to find is you're going to find a, a, a number of trolls who are essentially going to be saying the same kind of sentiment, which is uh, to tell Christians to mind their own business and tend to their own marriages. Uh, in other words, uh, no one's perfect. You know, you just mind your own business, worry about yourself. Now, uh, one of the things that's remarkable about uh, comments like these is the lack of self-awareness with which they uh, exhibit and even making them. Uh, the commenter in making this comment is clearly not following their own advice. They're not minding their own businesses and they're not uh, tending to their own affairs. Uh, they are taking it upon themselves to correct us in a rather public way. So I, I do uh, I do want to point that out that that is uh, somewhat remarkable uh, how, how that works. It seems to be it seems to be the case that um, the troll is always justified in their moral condemnation, but then if anyone else brings moral condemnation, uh, then that moral condemnation is somehow inappropriate. It's amazing how that works. Now, um, one of the uh, issues that's related to a comment like this is the the uh, issue that's often uh, brought up, and, and, and that's the issue of uh, the fact that uh, Christian marriages, by and large, don't do not seem to be in a very... Uh, uh, in, in very good order, and uh, there's plenty of you know secular statistics can be brought up at this point. The Barner research and everything else that would say that uh, many uh, many uh, marriages by professing Christians are in pretty rocky states, and maybe the divorce rate among Christians is not any better than the divorce rate among the world. Now, uh, part of the problem with these kind of uh, uh, scenarios in general, this kind of research in general, is that. Uh, that that these kind of surveys are made in a, in a country that has a vast or regions of the country which are dominated by cultural Christianity, and if you would just ask a few follow up questions with with many of these surveys, you might get a completely different picture. Meaning, you know, if you'd ask a few more questions, like, do you ever read your Bible? This individual who considers himself a Christian in some way, do you ever read your Bible? No. Uh, do you ever go to church? No. Uh, and if you were to narrow down the recipients to individuals who maybe read their Bible at least once a week and uh, go to church at least maybe two or three times a, a month or something like that, uh, one of the things you'll find is that Christian marriages by and large are doing much better than secular marriages. But, uh, you know, when, when you, when you uh, consider the question in general, should Christians mind their own businesses and tend to their own marriage? Well, obviously, Christians should be tending their own marriages, obviously. Uh, obviously, Christians should be the sorts of people who are first and foremost concerned with the types of sin that they, are, they themselves are committing. 
Um, there is a kind of humility that says that I want God to deliver me personally from the sins that I'm committing far more than I want him to uh, deliver other people from the sins that they are committing. Um, if you've observed marriages at any length, one of the things you're going to find is if, if a couple comes into counseling, inevitably uh, the man is going to be coming to counseling uh, in the vast majority of cases with a, with a uh, a keen interest in in fixing the problems of his wife, and the woman is going to come into counseling uh, with a very passionate uh, concern to fix all the problems that she clearly sees in the husband, and neither one of them are going to approach their own problems with the same level of diligence as they will approach the, the problems of their spouse, and this is fundamentally a problem. Uh, this is an issue. So Christians should obviously be concerned with the sins that we ourselves are committed. At the same time, one of the things that you might realize is that the Bible doesn't just tell us, uh, get the log out of your own eye, period. Uh, the Bible says, get the log out of your own eye so that you will be uh, able to see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. So so if you are, um, if you are the type of individual who is willing to overlook a log in your own eye and then try to, uh, you know, remove the minute speck in someone else's life, that that life that is clearly a problem. That's clearly an issue. Uh, uh, but you know, if we if we read through that passage more carefully, one of the things that we'll realize is that there is an expectation that you do get rid of that log in order that you might see clearly. Uh, to remove the speck in your brother's side. The goal there is not just to, to fix yourself, but to help your to help the other person. Uh, the Bible calls us our brother's keeper. Uh, one of Cain's problems is he says, am I my brother's keeper? And the polite answer is yes, you were your brother's keeper. You should be looking out for your brother. If you read through the New Testament, one, one of the things you're going to see is we have responsibility to, to other people. We have responsibilities to share the good news to them. Uh, Paul yeah, he says uh, to the churches that he uh, has labored uh, to day and night for a period of three years. He says that I am innocent of of your blood because I did not uh, cease to, I did not fail to declare to you the whole counsel of God. One of the things you realize is that we have obligations to other people to share the truth with other people, and that truth that we share with them might be rejected. And one of the ways that we qualify ourselves um, to help other people is to deal with the sin in our own life. So. Bible says, if anyone's caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore the other person in a spirit of gentleness, looking to yourself, lest you also be tempted. Uh, obviously, we should be the kind of individuals who are, who are first and foremost seeking to fix the problems that we face, but then we should also, out of love for other people, seek to help other people who are caught in tra- transgressions that we are not caught in ourselves. This has been another installment of Answering a Fool with Bible Bashed. As always, if you would like to be included in one of our Answering a Fool episodes, feel free to respond to us on our Facebook, Twitter, or Gab posts with a disrespectful, sarcastic, often off-topic comment that shows you did not thoughtfully engage with anything we have actually said, and we will do our best to include an answer to your trolling comment. Keep in mind, the days are short, and trolls are in abundant supply, but we will do our best.